I'm Jonathan Simon. I'm the director of the new Center for Global Health and Development. The public health research community is asking fundamentally different questions than clinicians themselves providing patient care to an individual person. Our work is to stand back from that individual patient. We're trying to answer the questions that improve the effectiveness and efficiency of programs and policies to improve the health of populations around the world. The project that we're working on here in Western Kenya is an opportunity to look into the global AIDS problem and particularly the response from the Kenyan government and from the world community. It was very scary, very, very scary for Kenyans. People started really dying very young and very early. The initial response was denial, you know, no, it doesn't exist, no, not us, and no, not here. It was a taboo to have. HIV, it was a curse. Around about 2001, Cambry started collaborating with Boston University. In the time when treatment was just becoming available, it wasn't clear who was going to pay for it. So we had a financial argument that we were trying to make. Don't run away from the HIV AIDS epidemic, invest in the HIV AIDS epidemic. Think of it as an investment opportunity with positive returns. The positive return is a healthy labor force that would help your business continue to succeed. That can be translated into policy and improve the quality of life of their people. This is the job that we are doing with Boston University. For the past 10 years we've been working here in Caricho, we're trying to estimate what the productivity effects of the disease are on agricultural estate workers, in this case tea pluckers. This is a production field for tea. Tea is the main cash crop in this region, not just in Caricho but in Kenya. The tea plantations are massive, many, many square kilometers of land. Thousands of workers work on the plantation. HIV prevalence within the plantation community was 9, 10 percent prevalence, 11 percent perhaps in women, 12 percent even. Now we chose the tea estates for a particular reason, and that was we needed a workforce where we could directly measure productivity. As you can see, each one of these fields is clearly demarcated, and each one of these workers is an individual producer. Each person picks the best two and a half leaves. This is what we take to the factory to be processed for plug tea. The wage of the worker is directly related to how many of these leaf buds that they pluck. If somebody plucks 10 kilos, he's paid for 10 kilos. If he plucks 100 kilos, he's paid for 100 kilos. These are the check roll registers where they would keep the records of how many kilograms of tea the pluckers were plucking on a daily basis. We record each and every activity on every day. This is an incredibly unique opportunity to actually look at changes in productivity over time, not just the number of days somebody doesn't show up at work, but the number of days that somebody shows up and they can't do as much as they could have done had they not been sick. It's only the past few years, really 2004, that the workers on these plantations have had access to antiretroviral therapy. Prior to then, HIV was a death sentence. These patients came in and we saw them waste away and there's very little we could do for them. They either died or they became too sick and they went back to their homes. Our first piece of work here out in the tea fields documented the productivity impacts of the disease on the workers before antiretroviral drugs were available. And what we were able to show in that early work was that the decline in productivity occurred long before the clinical staff in the medical center knew these people had disease. We were not demonstrating anything that certainly the people who were here in the, in the fields didn't know. It was about proving to the bigger community that this is, this is the, the, the degree of the problem, this is how big it is. Right as we came out with our first results showing the dramatic drop off in productivity in, those, in the year and a half before a person goes on to die from this disease, ARVs show up. So we quickly started a second study. What are the productivity impacts on the workforce of having access to treatment? 